great in his presence. Amen. And how many knows once you get in the presence of God, there's something that's going to come up on you that's called the anointing of God, and there's something great. You might even cry. You might even laugh. You might even fall down under the anointing. But when you get in the presence of God, when you get into the presence of Jesus Christ, there's something that happens to you on the inside that makes you feel just like a baby. Amen. Amen. The Bible said, unless you come home as a little child, you'll no wise enter into the kingdom of heaven. Amen. This lady realized that she was in the presence of somebody holy. Amen. She realized who this Jesus was. And, and it didn't matter how much money she paid for this bike. Or it didn't matter how much she prayed, paid for this ointment. That she had to do something that was great in his sight. Amen. Amen. I realized once I found Christ or, or, or Christ found me, he wasn't lost. I was. Right. Once I realized that he found me. Once I realized who he was, I wanted to get closer and closer to this man called Jesus. I, I wanted to cling to him each and every moment of the day. There was a the time went by that I didn't want to have a hold of him and get a hold of his knowledge, get a hold of his word, but we've got to realize sometimes that people are out to take us and they're out to take us by craft. And the devil will use who he wants to use, just like he's talking about, Sissy, about your boss. The devil will use anything he can. He'll throw anything he can at you to get you discouraged, to get you Amen. to fall off the mark. Are you hearing me? To Come get on. you misled to the left and to the right. He'll use any kind of tactic that is in his arsenal to take you down if you allow him. Amen. Amen. It's not by chance, but it's the adversary. Right. The Bible said that we not wrestle against flesh and blood, but against principalities, ruling of this, of this world, darkness, principalities in high places. Amen. It's what we fight against, Brother Joe. It's not the fact that that person don't like me. It's not the fact that I'm not doing my job. But it's just the fact that you're a Christian, sits And let me tell you something. The devil is after you, but let me tell you something. Greater is he that is in you than he is in the world. As he said he overcame the world. There's a greater power that lives on the inside of me than on the inside of this world. God give me power over the devil. Amen. He give me power over that enemy. Amen. Somebody give him praise today. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Jesus. We talked this morning about the tactics of Satan and how he, he's going to try to get you. Mm -hmm. The Bible said that the scribes saw how they might take him by craft. They, yes. They're going to trick away. They're going to find somebody that's going to let that batter down. They're going to find somebody that's not too close to Jesus like he thought he was close to him. Just like the devil tries to do to us today. There was a man, the Bible called Judas Iscariot, and the Bible said that he was after some silver. He was after those that silver piece. He was after the money. And people don't know, but history would say that Judas was a greedy person. He was a man that liked money. And he would steal out of that offering plate. Are you hearing me? And he would put it in his own pocket because he knew once he got rid of it down that another offering was going to be made up. And he would get that money back out and put it back then. That's why it wasn't missed. Amen. Mm -hmm. But the Bible knows that Jesus knows everything about everybody. Amen. The devil come in that day and sought that how they might take Jesus. Maybe he might slip up in a word. Maybe... He might slip up in what he does. You you might be at work, brother, and somebody looking at you, and believe me, if you call yourself to be a Christian, somebody looking at y'all too, and they're looking at your life each and every day, and when you're yep. at work, what people's trying to do, and it's not really the people, but it's the adversary of the devil. Right. He's like a roaring lion seeking who he may devour, and he's got people looking at you, just wait for you to slip up, just wait for you to say something wrong, just wait for you to do something wrong, so he can enter in and take you by craft. Amen. Yeah. He'll enter in and he'll try to knock you off your high horse. Mm -hmm. yes. He'll try to take you down. That's his job. And he does a good job at it. But guess what? He has no power no. over us. we got to realize who we are in God. I realize who I am in God. I, I'm not just a penalty person. I'm not just Pete Clark. But when I'm in the power and the anointing of God, I'm a mighty man of valor. Ain't no devil in hell can take me down there. Amen. Why is that? Because there is an anointing that comes upon me. The Bible says ah. that anointing destroys every yoke of the enemy. And how many know that the anointing on us will destroy every yoke? Amen. Mm -hmm. The old devil thought that how he might take Jesus by craft. Yeah. This little lady no doubt paid good money for that alabaster box of spike nard. That was a very precious thing, Brother Joe, back in those days. That, that was something dear and precious to the heart. You just 
You just didn't take this spike lord and just put it on anybody. It just, it just wasn't for anybody. There was a special occasion, though, that there had to come. That had, the word had to be fulfilled. And the Bible said that she saw Jesus. No doubt when she walked into that room, she realized that she graced into a holy presence. A presence that the scribes and the Pharisees can't see and still can't see today. That people still can't see. see, see that she graced into a place where there was a holy God that was sitting there. And there was something she had to do spontaneous in that time and in that season for this man. And the Bible says she had an alabaster box full of ointment. No matter what the price was, it wouldn't matter that she paid $10 million for it. It was a time and place for that season that she had to do something for that man called Christ because the word had to be fulfilled. The Bible said he watches over his words. He hastens to perform it. Not one child or one till of the third word should pass away before heaven and earth pass away. She realized that she was in a place where there was a holy God and she had to realize I have to do something great for this man no matter the price of the spike, no, no matter the price, the price of the sacrifice, no matter how many times I have to pray or how many times I have to go to prayer meeting or intercession for somebody, no matter what, I'm going to do something for Christ's sake. Amen. Amen. She made a sacrifice of a very, very precious, precious ointment. And the Bible says she broke the box and she poured it on his head. Hallelujah. It didn't matter the price. Come on. It didn't matter what it cost. It. There was a time that she had to do something spontaneous for this presence that was sitting there before her. We, we've got to realize there is a great presence that comes when, when we get in one mind and one accord and we agree together. There's a great presence. He said, if any two agree as believe in that thing which he prayed, he can ask him. Amen. God said Amen. he'll do it for him. Whether you two are gathered in my name, there are I in the midst. And we got to realize there's a holy God in the presence of us today. We've got to realize that we're going to have to do something spontaneous today and say, Jesus, it's me, it's me, oh Lord, standing in the need a prayer. I got a brother. I got a sister that's on crack cocaine. I got a sister that needs help today. I got one down of cancer in my family and I need a great presence. I need a great God that can get a hold of them and touch them not by what man can do but Come by on. what a holy Amen. God can do. A divine power greater than mine that can get a hold of them. I need you Jesus today. Amen. I need you today. She needed something. She had a purpose for that time and season. Mm -hmm. The Bible said, I think it was verse 8, she did what she could do. Okay. She couldn't do no more than what she could. That's right. But the Bible said that the, fair, that the, that the scribes got mad. They got mad. And the Bible said there was great indignation against her that day because they thought this was a waste. How many times, Brother Joe, we darkened the door of the church? How many times have we prayed to God and people will look at us and say, that's a waste. Mm -hmm. yeah. Amen. That's a waste to come down here mm -hmm. according to Christian sinner. It's a waste for you to darken the door to go on and pray. What's wrong with you? Why don't you just let the world go right on by? You can go ahead and do what you want to and still make it to heaven. But let me tell you something. There is a way called the highway of holiness. And I believe there's still some people. I believe God still got a remnant of people that's trying to walk that way of holiness. Amen. You can't walk to the left. You can't walk to the right. But the Bible says straight is the gate and narrow is the way. If you be there, then walk there. And not a whole lot of people going to walk your way. And let me tell you something. That the gospel, the holiness 